It is time for another 3 day challenge video. In this challenge I practice a character for 3 days and enter a tournament on the last day. As always I picked 4 characters from the YouTube comment section and let Twitch chat decide my character. Where are fat? You can have a thousand likes on all him on YouTube, I will not include this fucker. Foot fetishists coming through. Who's got the feed? Corin. Corin got the feed. <laughs> Votes. <laughs> Looks like Corin is winning, L stream. Dudes be like Corin is so lame, my brother in Christ you chose the character. And with that we're learning Corin for 3 days. Honestly, what, what really is there to learn with Corrin? After Twitch chat successfully voted for Corrin, I went right into the training mode of Smash Ultimate to test out her movement, stats, moves and more. Corrin's stats are something we need to talk about before we get into the fun part. Unfortunately, Corrin doesn't have the best fall speed or running speed, which makes it difficult for Corrin to either chase opponents down or run away from them depending on the character she is facing. However, something Corrin excels in are her dash frames. She is the fastest character when it comes to this. It basically means that Corrin, together with Sheik, is the fastest character to shield out of a dash, which is a pretty huge deal. This makes her approach and defense with shield significantly better. And while Corrin is not really fast when it comes to running, her moves are and they have a good amount of range. While I checked out Corrin's moves in combo game and training mode, I don't want to go over it too much. Instead, I get right into real matches and explain what I learned along the way. Being a sword character, Corrin has a good amount of range. Her down tilt can scoop opponents up and lead into another aerial. However, she is a character who has not a huge combo tree and more 2 to 4 hit combos. Instead, what you have to do is recognize how far you can go with your combo game and then push your advantage through catching the landing attempts of your opponents. No! With her aerials and tilt, she can stuff out approaches very well, which can lead slowly but surely to huge amounts of damage. She is an exceptionally good juggler. But not only are her aerials fast, her up air and back air also have a good amount of kill power. Speaking about back air, this move has the awesome ability to reposition yourself. The majority of moves don't affect your movement at all. Corrin's back air, however, sends you in the direction she is facing. This makes back air an insane tool to safely stuff out approaches or pressure your opponent's shield. What a stalk! You can also use it to gain a bit of distance while you're offstage for better recovery. Without question, up air and back air are probably Corrin's best aerials. However, all the other aerials also fulfill a role in her kit. May it be for opening or extending combos with Nair and Fair, getting kill confirms or to cheese your opponent with down air. Dude, what a stock! 15 seconds in, zero to death! Fallen stalls like down air are usually more like surprise tools. They don't work so good against knowledgeable opponents. What I tried to figure out with down air was if you can full hop down air and still recover back on stage. I found the right targets in the lead smash and, well, it definitely works and can be used as a cheesy kill and this multiple times in a row. Even three times of one match. <laughs> Damage given 192% and took three stocks. Well, at least I don't have to make a video, can I kill only with Corrin's down here anymore? I do only recommend it if you are 100% certain that it hits and you have a stock advantage anyway. If you mess up the timing, your stock is definitely gone. No shot! No shot! It worked! <laughs> now let's talk about her smashes. Her up smash is a very good smash to catch opponents who are landing on platforms. Down smash can hit on both sides, while her like has a tipper hitbox and kills earlier. And forward smash just goes through. Oh forward smash has a huge amount of range and a hitbox while charging, which makes it a very tricky tool to ledge trap as well. I myself didn't get too many of those. But still, it's pretty good for ledge trapping. I just suck at using it, that's all. Sorry, Maybe. The major drawback though is that the release of forward smash, so basically the lands, is only active for two frames. Uh, wait, what? And has a very long and precise hitbox. So you either gonna time it or angle it right. Angling is probably better. Damn, kid was ducking. And if you hit with the tip, your opponent receives a ton of knockback. It is definitely her best smash. The kill DDD? Let's go briefly over a few more moves. Forward tilt is a good get off me tool with decent kill power. Up tilt is good for chuckling your opponent. However, watch out for the hitbox backwards because it won't hit characters like Pikachu. So basically all the fluffy pancakes in the game. Up special grants you invulnerability on startup, but watch out for attacks on your head. And counter sucks massive ass. It still has usage cases, but it fails as an edge guarding tool because it sends your opponent upwards instead of further offstage, giving them another landing opportunity. Now let's talk about two special moves. First, neutral special. 
The huger the shot is, the longer it stuns and it can confirm onto your jump as well. You can release the shot earlier by letting go of B and by pressing B quickly again you can charge the jump. I used it most of the times to read my opponent's landing in front of me, as a roll read on the ledge or to snipe my opponent off stage. And the snipe is where the magic comes in, because this can lead into the other special I want to talk about. Side special. <laughs> If people spend too much time on the ledge, you can quickly use side special to pin them and take their stock. The insta pin is done quickly by pressing side B and roll over to your A button. That's good though, the pin on the ledge is pretty fast. Furthermore, you can use the pin to either go left, right, down or up. See, if I miss that, then Sonic can definitely do something about it. Most of the time, I used up against fast characters like Sonic, because if you go left or right with pin, Sonic can chase you easily. However, that was insane. If you go up, you can quickly use an aerial for safety if your opponent is not ready for it. Oh, let's go! That was good! During these two days, it was a very fun experience to play Corrin. I got a lot of matchup experience, a lot of insane highlights and more understanding of the character. And after two days of learning Corrin, it was finally time to compete in a tournament with her on day three. But first, I had to wait for my opponent. You know what, I can play 7 minutes against the Sonic in Elite Smash, but I'm not patient enough to wait for a fucking set. They started with freaking losers already. There is almost a loser set finished. There is a loser set finished before we are playing. I didn't even play my set and people are already out of the tournament. Okay, we are officially the last freaking set that starts in Winners Round 2. Oh, there we go, we got our match. Fucking finally. Winners Round 2 against Satara, who played Samus. Game 1 went just like my theory promised. Samus being a floaty character, I was able to chuckle Tatara for the majority of his first stock, until I finally took it with a back air. With little to no percent, I managed to gain 65% extra credit on Tatara's stock until I went down to an up throw. My stock was definitely long overdue. He managed to make a great comeback on the second stock after inflicting a bunch of damage. We were both at kill percent and took each other's stock out one after another. At the end, we were both at high percent, but I took the final stock with an up smash. Oh, tough one. It was so good in the beginning, but Tatara brought that back pretty good. Game 2 went on town in City, which I am not really against with Corrin. Sure, up air kills later, but I've still got a bunch of moves like back air that kill on the smaller side blast zones. That being said, I was in a scary situation when Tatara used Sam's up air up B combo near the top blast zone. Oh no, oh no, 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 no! But I somehow managed to survive that. This gave me the opportunity to rack up more percent on him until going down to a dash attack. Although the Samus man was at high percent, I didn't take the stock until 166%. That was tough to get that stock, 112% is a lot. But I was already in kill percent as well on my second stock. But just like that, with good spacing and good reads, I managed to bring Tatara to high percent as well and even took the stock before him. Ooh, what a comeback! In fact, I lived until 196% before finally going down. Okay, fair enough. We both damaged each other again to kill percent and then I made a big mistake. I used up my double jump mid-air for no reason at all and got hit by a charge shot. And with that, Tatara wins game 2. Uh, just a charge shot. Game 3 went on Pokemon Stadium 2 again, because it was pretty good for me the first time. But Tatara had something different to say about it. He took my first stock early with an up tilt. Mm, okay. And then even my second stock with a beautiful bomb to fair edge guard. Oh, that hurt a lot. Look guys, usually I'm the type of guy to make things vague and hype you up about a potential comeback. But I got completely destroyed in this game and Tatara won the game and the set with one final down air edge guard. Jesus Christ. No, I got wrecked that last match. Damn Tatara, she cheesed. <laughs> um, yeah, a loser's run right now. At this point, you gotta see it positive. A loser's run means more sets and more content. Hopefully. Loses round 2 against Nis who played Piranha Plant. Game 1 started on Town and City and already early on Nis found herself in a chuckle situation against me. This is just really Corrin's strong suit and my opponent's damage definitely shows that. Even though I was in a good lead, I found myself in a very tough spot offstage and barely made it back. What a relief. <laughs> Dude, my reaction. After one more back air, I finally took the first stock off Nis. I managed to damage her even further on the second stock and even got the kill with another back air before her. However, this time she ends up back with Petui, taking my first stock off. At this point, it is pretty hard to bring a match back. She did a good job adapting this game and damaging me further and further, but it was not enough and this went down to one final pin, bringing me the first win in the set. Game 2 in this opted for Hollow Bastion, 
With Corrin I didn't feel too bad on this stage. Honestly, I don't think that Corrin has a necessarily bad stage anyway. Just stages where she is better. This found herself in an offstage situation. I used the counter to quickly get her in a chuckle situation and finish the stock off with an up air. Plant doesn't really have the best air mobility, so I was pretty sure this is gonna work out. Starting with a down tilt, I chased this down and was reading a lot of options to damage her even further. But I flew a bit too close to the sun and she slammed her big pot on my face. <laughs> what? I didn't see that one coming though. I damaged this to pretty high percent and slowly but surely Piranha Plant was getting into up throw kill percent, taking the second stock off as well. There we go. My spacing and juggling with Corrin was really shining during this set and I pushed my advantage state to the absolute limit. I even tried to go for a fancy up the kill to finish it off, but paid brutally for it by a nicely timed backer from this. At the end of the match, it wasn't enough for the Piranha Plant main and she went down to one of my up smashes, winning me my first set in this tournament. But good adaptation by Nis. Losers round 3 against Yoshikawa who played Dark Samus. Game 1 went on Pokemon Stadium 2 and I had to play against a Dark Samus player. We both damaged each other up to very high percent and it was just a matter of time who takes the first stock. We both have the tools to kill with stray hits if you want to. Yoshikawa found herself on the ledge and went down to my fast insta pins after grabbing the ledge too long. I really do blame nobody for getting hit by insta pin. Sometimes you want to wait on the ledge for an option, but this move is just so fast and unreactable. Even though I was at high percent, I damaged Yoshikawa to kill percent on her second stock and almost took it as well. But then this happened. Oh wow, that did not hit. I slightly misspaced my pin and paid for it with a forward smash. Her stock however went down shortly after to one of my pins again. I damaged Yoshikawa further and further and Dark Samus being the floaty character it is, Corrin had a good time juggling it. By the way, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Dark Samus is just a suit, right? That's why I'm referring to Dark Samus as it. Feel free to leave a comment down below and inform me. That all aside, I got one final down tilt into up air to finish Yoshikawa's stock and winning game 1. Game 2 Yoshikawa switched to Samus, but we set on Pokemon Stadium too. Samus and Dark Samus are almost the same characters, but they have a few differences regarding the hurt boxes when it comes to rolling, jumping or shooting chop shot. The second game was looking good for me and I took the first stock of Yoshikawa with a tipper forward smash. That move is so strong. I used my up throw to get her into a juggling situation and she ended up on the right side of the stage. One good roll read was enough to take the second stock early with her charged neutral B. Nice read. For the last stock I used great spacing and my up tilt to get her into a tech situation. Just to keep her in disadvantage. At the end I read every option and finished the set with a zero to death. She cheesed to Yoshikawa. Dude, that was a convincing game. Three stock? Losers round four against Fleezy who played Luigi. Game one started on small battlefield and I used Corrin's range to carefully keep Luigi out of my comfort zone. If this little plumber grabs you only one time, your stock might be gone, which makes this matchup most of the time pretty campy. With a very lucky neutral B, I was able to secure the first stock, but I was not allowed to get more extra credit and got grabbed at a very unusual spot. This was a surprise for sure. The grab on the platform? What? The game was pretty even again and we both were at high percent on our second stock. However, one good edge guard from Fleecy was enough to get into the lead. Nope, that's it. And remember what I said earlier about getting grabbed? Um, yeah, about this. No, I try. I really tried to. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you got grabbed, no. I will say it time and time again, I think Luigi is more toxic than Kazuya. Game 2, Fleecy decided to switch characters to Dark Pit. I'm completely honest with you that I don't have a single clue why they switch characters. However, I'm not playing my main either, and just my 3 day Corrin. So maybe Fleecy took this as an opportunity to practice Dark Pit in the tournament as well. But that are all just assumptions. After getting the first stock, I was able to rack up more damage on Fleecy, but went down to a near edge guard. The second stock didn't wait too long, and I impaled Dark Pit with my side beat to secure the stock. Dead? Yes. Slowly but surely, we both racked up more and more percent until we both were at kill percent. The major difference between us was that I had a stock advantage. And with that, I won the game with another side B while Fleecy was hanging on the ledge. Game 3 went on small battlefield again. I found an opening with a fair and pushed my advantage state until I brought Fleecy offstage. The Dark Pit player thought they were safe, but my forward smash has a huge range and enormous kill power. After they missed a forward smash of their own, I took the opportunity to get them offstage with another back air and finished their stock with an offstage back air as well. Oh, good edge guard. I just love this move. I was already at high percent and Fleecy got me offstage with a forward throw. 
I was trying to mix up my recovery, but mixed myself up in this deed. Oh, okay, okay. But it was at high percent anyway, so it didn't matter too much. Whatever. On the last stock, I slowly racked up more damage with my aerials, getting a few 2-3 to three hit combos here and there. It was looking better and better for me, and at the end, I finally took the game with a back air close to center stage. GG's to Fleecy. A little bit too late. A little bit too late. That was kind of like, li like me, you know, in the first match. <laughs> hey, we won three sets so far and lost one, so that's not too bad. If I win two more sets, we're in top 8, by the way. Losers round 5 against 9 Nines, who played Pyro and Mithra. And game 1 started on small battlefield again, and I found myself in a good lead early on. Also, can we talk about how down here did 22% damage here? There was an insane amount of damage for this move. Later on, I found a neutral air hit on them, and secured this dog with a follow-up back air. Through a good chugger game, I was able to get 9s to high percent again, and was almost able to take the stock, but failed on executing the neutral B confirm. I didn't know if it would kill there or not. My current experience for that is not enough. I hit an up air against Pyro and they were in a landing situation. I barely avoided their down air. Just look at this. This is called spacing, guys. My up smash connected and I took the second stock. I was still at my very first stock and while Nines was able to take my first stock off, it was a little too late for the Aegis player and I finished the game with one more up air. Solid? Talking about solid, I can see a switch right now. Game 2, Nine switched to Snake, which is their main. I'm not the only one in this tournament playing with secondary or fun characters. This game started out in my favor, but never underestimate the ability of Snake to rack up huge amounts of damage in no time with projectiles and aerials. And at some point, Nines was able to take my stock with a nicely timed up tilt. But shortly after, I followed up and took Nines stock as well, while they tried to land. The second stock was looking again in my favor. I racked up a huge chunk of damage, avoiding all of the projectiles, but once 9s found an opening, it was go time for them. And with one more C4, it was also time for me to go. Oh, okay. Shortly after, I evened it out again with an up air. The last stock was as even as it can get. I tried to avoid everything, but got hit by a grenade and found myself in a landing situation. 9s took the opportunity to take my last stock with another up tilt. No! This move is so fast and strong. Game 3 was again on small battlefield, and it was my time to play around all the projectiles. The good part about Corrin is that she has a lot of range, so I took my time and just squeezed out every opening there is for more damage. I even utilized my opponent's grenades and got an insane stock against them. Oh, let's go! That was good! I had a huge lead and tried to get as much extra credit as possible. I didn't care about the projectiles too much and often threw them back where they came from. We both got each other to kill percent. I took 9 stock with another up air while they were landing and I died shortly after to a C4. But I was in a stock advantage. For me it was go mode now. Usually Snake is a character who likes to trade with grenades to rack up more damage. But I had the stock advantage, so I didn't really care about trades. For me it was just the faster path to victory after all. And after I hit a nair, 9 was again in the landing position and I was able to finish the set with one more up air landing catch. Oh, that was good! Bro, that grenade stock in the beginning, jeez. GG's to 9s. That was intense. Loses round 6 against Kanto, who played Zero Suit Samus. Game 1 started on Battlefield, and this set was all about stray hits and little combos from my side. Zero Suit Samus is a character with very good defensive options and disadvantage, including her flip kick as well. It was pretty hard to catch the landings, but I managed to take the first stock regardless. On the second stock, I got a huge combo though against Kanto. Ooh, good damage. But shortly after, they took my stock with a very nicely timed down air near the ledge. Good timing on that, though. After a mistimed parry, Kento was almost able to take my stock, but I lucked out. That hurt. We both were at high percent, and I was able to take the second stock off Kento. There we go. Just to go down shortly after by mixing up the timing with Sirius and back air. And on the last stock, the Chuckler became the Chuckled. And I got hit by a huge up air train. But fortunately for me, Kento missed the up B. With a few hits here and there, we both were at kill percent. I was on the ledge and went for a jump get up, but Kanto read it and hit me with a back air, ending game one. Ah, just went for that, damn. Come on, I don't want to go out at 9th. <laughs> I want to get top 8. Game 2, I went on the old reliable Pokemon Stadium 2. And something happened which I was not prepared for. The second hit of forward air 2 missed and I was not able to tech it, receiving huge huh? damage in the process. Huh? What, because Zero Suit Samus move don't work? And a while later, my stock was taken by an up special as well. That's it already? Oh god, okay. With Zero Suit's evasiveness, it was tough to bring this back, so I had to play this very carefully. 
I received only 48% before taking the stock with an up air. Kanto got me to over 100%, but I managed to inflict the same amount of percent to Kanto as well. The game was basically even again. I was in a scary offstage situation which almost cost me my stock. Then Kanto went for another back air offstage. But I activated my up B early to gain invulnerability and launched myself into the lead. Just to get put down shortly after by another side B. At this point it was tournament game for me. I had to win this game, otherwise I'm out. Kanto got me out with a forward air and back air. For the first time ever in this tournament I tried to recover back with an extremely early up special to mess their timing up. But little did I know that the flip kick was fast enough to hit me and launch me into the bottom blast zone, ending my tournament run. Oh, yikes. Oh, I thought I'd go one time for a high recovery, but it didn't work out against Sirius and Samus. So now I'm out. Now I'm out of the tournament. Unfortunately, the tournament run was over for me. But bringing this all the way back from losers round 2 until 9th place was a pretty good achievement in my opinion. Of course, you want to know how far my opponents got. Kento and Tatara both managed to get 5th in this tournament and ended their runs in losers quarter. There were a lot of insane opponents today. And it was a fun 3 day challenge with Corin. I hope you enjoyed this video and if so feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Until next time.